Welcome back, folks. Uh, so today we're going to be swapping out the tire. Got a little flat, flat tire in the front of the M1090 dump truck. Um, so I wanted to point something out for anybody that's thinking about buying one of these trucks at auction. Um, I uh, so had selected this truck partly on the basis of the condition or the condition I thought the tires were in. There were about 15 trucks for sale uh, on that given day. And I uh, in addition to other things, I had looked at the, the tires that were being offered on all the different trucks and some of them were in, you know, kind of rough shape or, uh, really weird mismatch combinations. And what I, what I, uh, found on this truck is I thought they were in really good shape. You know, there's plenty of, uh, tread there. Uh, these are the Michelin, uh, XMLs. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Michelin XMLs. Um, and I thought, okay, well, that'll, that'll be good. That'll save me some money, uh, on tires, not having to mess with that. Um, the big thing with these tires actually is that, uh, you know, with the military, they like to buy extras of everything. And so there's a lot of surplus tires available, but they're, they're like 300 pounds a piece. And so shipping ends up, uh, being a substantial portion of the cost to get them. And so, um, you know, ideally if you don't have to, you don't want to change the tires anyway, so I got the truck and I thought it was good. And one of the things that I found is that, uh, you know, running this off road, I'm using it on a ranch. I'm using it as a dump truck on dirt roads. Um, I run the tire pressure, uh, on the, you know, the, this truck has the tire pressure controller. I run it in either cross country or in sand mode, you know, getting up, uh, through muddy trails and, you know, uh, on weird, weird terrain. Uh, I want the, the sidewalls to flex quite a bit. And under normal circumstances, you know, with dried out tires, uh, which it turned out this has, um, you know, it'd probably be fine, but I'm flexing the sidewalls a ton. And, you know, you'd think that considering the thickness, these are like three quarters of an inch thick, um, I think in the sidewalls, you'd think that they, you know, they, they might be dried on the outside, but they're actually uh, still, you know, pretty pliable inside. But what I found, this is the third tire that I've actually replaced. Um, you can see here, I don't know if you can see the wire there. Uh, what I found is they, they crack all the way through. You flex them much and they crack all the way through. The first one, I actually had to drive down a dirt road quite a ways before I could swap out the tire. And all of the rubber uh, on the sidewall had actually blown out. And I was left with nothing but wires all the way around. Um, I'll see if I can find a photo to show you guys that. And so anyway, the, the moral of the story is if you're thinking about buying one of these trucks and you just assume that the tires look from the photos, you know, in, in my case, I didn't actually go to the location where they were selling the truck. I bought it online. Um, but if, if you assume that the truck doesn't need tires, you know, think again, unless they were swapped out recently, um, or you're not really planning on, uh, moving it around a whole lot. Um, there's a good chance you're going to have to swap the tires out, uh, uh, fortunately, again, there's lots of surplus out there. Um, when the first tire went, uh, I found a seller on eBay that, uh, would sell me a set of six of them for, I think like 2,300 bucks shipped from the East coast to the West coast. Um, and probably half of that was uh shipping cost, and that's pretty good. And so I've already swapped out two of the six tires. I'll show you those ended up going with XZLs just cause that's what what I could find for a good deal. Um, yeah, so you can see, yeah, those are XZLs. Uh, and the tread's really nice. I don't remember what the date code on these was. I think it was 2010 or 2015, but there's no uh, dry cracking or anything. Um, it's pretty straightforward to swap the tires. I don't know if you've seen the videos out there or not on it, but um, you know, you're not prying with huge Gorilla bars or anything like that. Uh, it basically, it's just a lot of bolts and everything is heavy, but, and it's time consuming, but outside of that, it's pretty easy. So it's not, it's not anything to be overly intimidated about. Uh, you've got to have the right size, you know, wrenches and stuff, but we're going to go through that process today and I'll show you, uh, what it's like. So yeah, here are the tires that I had, uh, ordered. These are the other four that I haven't installed. Um, the way I'm going to do this is, uh, just you know, swap out the tires as I need to. Um, and so we'll just grab one of these today and put it on and we'll just see how, how much longer the other ones hold up. And 
something else worth noting, uh, these tires are actually full of water from sitting out in the rain. Uh, the, uh, a lot of the surplus that's out there right now is coming from the uh, uh, leftover tires from the MRAP program. And so they've got these aluminum wheels that don't really fit on anything else. They'll pull the wheels and scrap them, and then they're selling the tires. Uh, the tires are set up with uh, run flat rings in them. And for whatever reason, uh, I guess they have to be equipped with a lot of grease. On the inside, it's run flat grease. Um, when I got these tires, they were slathered in what run flat grease inside and out. And you can see a little bit of the stuff left over on the inside. Part of the reason why the water's gray in there is because it's got that one run flat grease dissolved in it. It's water soluble. It washes right off. It's not a big deal. In fact, on the other tires that have already mounted, I didn't even bother washing it off or anything. And I'm not going to do that for this either. I'll just get the water out of them and call it good. But if your tires come all greasy, don't despair. You just uh, wash them off with water. It doesn't even take any soap. And today we're using the Harbor Freight Air Jack. So I didn't actually buy this jack specifically for this purpose. I think the stroke might be a little bit short. I'll have to block and reset it a few times. You can hear the water draining out of the bed in the back when I jacked this thing up. The rainwater that was in the bed started dumping it out of, out of the truck. So... Hopefully that's not too distracting. Anyway, the first thing that we've got to do is uh, pull this uh, CTIS connection hose out of this stud. The way that these uh, tires fill is uh, basically through the uh, wheel hub and then through the stud, through the hose into a regulator and then into the tire. So we'll pull that off. I'll leave the CTIS on for now and then we'll pull that off when we actually go to disassemble the wheel. Um, after that, I'm going to break these free with a big breaker bar then I'll just use an impact wrench. You want to be a little bit careful not to lose these uh, washers in the process. Okay, well, considering I didn't jack or I didn't um, break the nuts free before jacking it up, and this is a front tire, there's no uh, parking brake on the front uh, axle, and so I'm going to have to fire the truck up and then uh, use the brakes to hold it to resist against uh, that breaker bar. Okay, so something to note that I uh, didn't realize here is uh, um, that uh, I'm kind of new to air brakes. Uh, I had always been under the impression that uh, air brakes, when depressurized, they always fail on. Apparently, that's only the case in the rears on these trucks, considering they have spring packs in the rears and the fronts. If the system's depressurized as if uh, the truck's been sitting for a little while, the brakes aren't actually engaged. And so when I went to uh, break this free a few minutes ago... Um, uh, the uh, wheel just spun freely. So I had to fire it up, pump up the system, and then I had uh, one of my boys hold the uh, brakes down while I broke the uh, nuts free. So that's uh, something to note. Uh, if you're wondering about the nut size on this, it's inch and a half, and then the breaker bar that I'm using is a 48 inch, uh, 48 inch um, by one inch uh, drive uh, Titan breaker bar. I picked this up off of... Uh, Amazon, uh, and then I'm using a, uh, a one inch to three quarter inch adapter to get to the uh, one and a half inch socket that I'm using. And this is all, you know, Amazon special stuff. So nothing expensive here. Um, I did slip a piece of uh, one and three quarter pipe or the breaker bar that's also four feet long. And so that'll give me a lot more extension.
There we go. Oh, and one more note, uh, the uh, bolt size that uh, holds the CTIS hose in place, uh, in case anybody's interested, uh, 7 8 inch. All right, to pull the CTIS uh, hose assembly off, uh, we've got two socket uh, screws here. These are six millimeter, so I'm gonna use that. And then uh, you just gotta pull this uh, uh, tube nut here, and that's gonna be three quarter. Looks like we're seven eighths of an inch on this uh, uh, pipe elbow here. We're going to need to hold that in place while I'm pulling that tube nut so we don't put too much force on the uh, valve stem. All right, so there's your CTIS hose assembly. Uh, we've got to pull this fitting so that we can rotate the elbow uh, um, to unscrew it to get past this uh, stud here. Something to note on this... Uh, this elbow, it's got an O-ring down inside. It's got an O-ring down inside. I don't think you can really necessarily see it, but that seals up against this uh, uh, smooth section of the valve stem. And so uh, I think the reason why they did that as opposed to a face seal is that it makes it so that the, uh, the elbow being fully seated isn't necessary for proper sealing and that allows this elbow to be clocked however is necessary to meet the requirements of however the hose is, uh, is um, laying on the wheel. And so when you tighten this down, you're not trying to tighten it all the way down uh, until it's uh, seated. You're trying to tighten it down until it's almost to the bottom, and then you get the clocking uh, as needed to uh, fit the hose assembly. All right, again, we're uh, 15 sixteenths on the uh, wheel studs. Okay, so something that I forgot I did last time uh, I did one of these wheels is I actually went through and oiled all the studs. Uh, they're gonna be rusty and painted and I don't want to mess up the, uh, the nuts. I don't have any extras. And so this will help them come off a little easier. All right, so I'm just going to use this regular crowbar to uh, pry the, uh, the outer ring off. I have a second one here. There we go. So when I put this back on, you can see I've got some minor scratches in the surface here. 
I'll go through and buff those out just to be certain that this thing seals good. Um, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this, but that seems to work okay. All right, well, that was unexpected. I went to flip this over to put it on a milk crate and the rim popped loose. So I'll show you how that works. See, we got the rim here. So normally when you flip these wheels over, the rim is kind of stuck in them. And so I just discovered that I could throw the rim on a milk crate and it actually fits pretty good. And so with the weight of the tire and the rim and everything, it might be a little bit heavy on it, but if I was having trouble getting the rim out of the tire, this is what I was planning on doing. I'd set it on the milk crate, the tire would be hanging off of uh, this area here, and then uh, I would push down on the outside while prying on the tire against the rim. Again, same technique, a little bit of WD-40 and some blocks around there, and it'd pop loose. Uh, today, I didn't have to do that, so that's kind of nice. All right, so this is the beadlock ring. It's basically a, uh, a steel loop. You can see it just kind of wraps around there. And then on the ends, it's joined with these straps. And then uh, and then there's some uh, nylon, nylock nuts on the backside. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll break this free from the tire, offset it to one side so that I can access the uh, nuts on the backside. And then you kind of coil the, uh, the strap or this uh, loop of... Uh, metal in on itself. You'll see in a second uh, And then we can pull it out of the tire and put it in the new one So so far with this truck the tires have been a little bit more pliable than you might expect um, These rings come loose pretty easily So you can see bolts on this side Straps and nuts on that side. So I'll break those uh, Loose pull them off and then I can coil this in on itself to get it out of there the uh, bolt and nut are going to be 9 16 on both sides. Uh, so 9 16 socket, 9 16 wrench. Okay, so to get this locking ring out of here, uh, what I like to do is use a ratchet strap, just a regular small uh, cargo hold down strap, and I'll throw it around there. I'll offset uh, this, the uh, ends uh, so that they can pass over each other and then I'll uh, tighten it up and it'll make it small enough to get it out of there. There we go. So I think last time I did this, it actually went a lot smoother, but I'm pretty sure it's because I have the uh, ends offset to one side and that may have caused a problem. So when I go to put the new one, uh, the new tire, put this in the new tire, I'll straighten this out and I'll actually coil it a little bit tighter. Um, and that should help out quite a bit. All right, so you can see I've got this coiled uh, a lot tighter, a lot more on itself. It's a little easier to work with outside of the tire. Um, and so just with the pry bar and this ratchet strap, I was able to kind of coil it in. The only thing you gotta watch out for is that the uh, rubber tends to catch, hang up on itself. And so if you pry this away a little bit as you go, uh, it makes it a lot easier to get them to slip past each other. The other thing you could do is grease them up if you wanted, and that probably would make it a lot easier. So hopefully this goes in a little easier this time. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we'll break this loose. There we go. Okay, now we're in. Now we're in. Okay, go ahead and pull that out. Thank you. All right. Okay, so now I need to re-expand this 
so that I can connect the ends. Let's see, maybe if I can shove this down a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. I have a little more room to work with. Okay, so basically we just want to line up these uh, ends so that they butt together well. Um, I've got a little motorcycle tire iron I'm using to kind of pry that around a little bit. And I'll tighten those uh, bolts up with the uh, alignment where, where it's supposed to be. Let's see. Up there is pretty good. Okay, yeah, that, that should go okay. Let's see, let's put this guy in here. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now all we're doing is just recentering the uh, ring in between the beads so that uh, when we go to put the uh, rims in that it's able to just slide through. Uh, let's see. There we go. That's working pretty good. Okay, don't add it, it's all over. Okay, that looks pretty good. So before I can uh, put the wheel back together, I actually need to pull this O-ring and just make sure that the uh, area where it sits is clean. And then I'm gonna grease up the O-ring with uh, uh, tire lube. And so I reused all the previous ones from the other tires and they seem to be fine. They're all in decent shape. You can see it's kind of a triangular profile, so I'll just go through and wipe it off, and then I'll make sure that the ceiling surface is clean. To grease the uh, O-ring up, I'm using the same stuff as I use for the tire itself. It's this true flat uh, mounting stuff. It's just, I don't know if it's water-based or what it is, but it's something that I bought on Amazon. And I have no idea how to reopen it. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go, that's the stuff. So I'll go through and use this on the uh, O-ring. All right, so I've got the wheel, the rim all cleaned off and it's uh, sealing surface here and I've got the bead grease stuff good so we're going to go ahead and lower this on. I've got to be careful not to get rocks or anything else in that bead while I'm dropping it on and I've got the wheels suspended up in the air with this milk crate which happens to fit right so that the uh, uh, outside of the tire doesn't prevent it from fully seating on the um, on the rim. So here let's go ahead and lower this down on there. There we go. Just double checking that the O-ring's still sitting properly. So before I put the nuts all back on, I'm going to throw a little bit of this anti-seize uh, on the ends uh, just to make sure that when we go to torque them down, we don't end up with any galling.
when I go to tighten all these nuts down, they're going to go almost all the way down and then it's going to take a fair amount of force to pull the rim the, the last bit the rest of the way together. And so what I'm going to do is zip them all down with the impact gun uh, until they're uh, uh, just seated against the rim. And then I'll start progressively tightening them in kind of a crisscross pattern uh, so that I don't end up uh, pulling the uh, rim down crooked. The last step I've got to do before I can uh, put this wheel back on the truck and put the CTIS assembly back on and everything is to go through and torque these all. Now, every time I've gone to do these tires, I always uh, forget the torque spec on them and so uh, the the uh, studs anyway. And so I'll save you the trouble. Um, it seems like none of the other YouTube videos cited either. The torque spec on these uh studs here, the nuts, is uh, 210 to 240. So I'm going to just torque them to 220, uh, 220 foot-pounds. For Again, that's for these uh, nuts on the studs all the way around. And then in case I forget to mention it later, uh, the wheel lugs are supposed to be torqued to 450 foot-pounds. Um, I'm not actually going to torque them on this truck. I'm using it off-road. I don't have a 450 foot-pound torque wrench, and you're going to need a left and a right uh, operating torque wrench to do those anyway, which is even less common. So I don't think it matters that much, but these, these, I'm a little bit more concerned about getting them right. So 210, uh, 220, excuse me. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to throw a little bit more of this anti seize on there. Um, there's nothing I enjoy less than replacing studs because I uh, went all gorilla on the lug nuts and galled the threads. So I'll just throw a little bit on there and it'll save a lot of trouble. Just a note on these lug nuts, the uh, uh, driver's side, the other side, uses uh, reverse thread, which is kind of a kind of a semi-common thing with military stuff. Um, and so if you're trying to break them free and they're not coming loose, it's because you're running the wrong direction. Um, the passenger side, it looks like it's, uh, it's the right direction. All right, so I went ahead and uh, lowered the truck down some so that I could uh, have the tire grip the ground so I can tighten these down. And I'm just going to tighten them down to tight. Uh, they're supposed to be 450 foot-pounds, but I don't have a huge torque wrench. So we'll go with what I can get easily with this. I remember what it took to get them off. Okay, so the last step is going to be to put the CTIS uh, hose back on. Um, the important thing is just to make sure that the uh, O-rings and the surfaces are all clean. And then I'm going to actually throw a little bit of the residual tire grease on the, um, the O-rings so, uh, so that they slide in okay. Um, I've used other types of grease. It doesn't, I don't think it's real critical.
just a note, all this stuff is O-ring sealed. Nothing needs to be uh, cranked down Gorilla tight. So keep that in mind when you're putting it together. Uh-oh. Oh no, I guess we're okay. Actually, let's crank this back a little bit. There we go. So sometimes it helps to leave everything a little bit loose, uh, or at least this connection here when you're going to put the, uh, the bolts in here to get alignment correct. Okay, so there you have it. Easy. <laughs> well, a lot of steps and it's heavy. Uh, it's way after dark. This took way longer than I expected. You know, all these projects, they take twice as long when you want to try to show people how to do them. I had a buddy stop by while I was in the process of this and he says, hey, you know, is this a good time? And I said, well, I'm trying to uh, get this tire done before it gets dark. And so, um, you know, he, he went on his way. But anyway, uh, it's still on the jack. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the truck and we'll let it uh, air up the tire and that should uh, lift it off of the, the uh, jack and the jack stand that I've still got underneath there. Um, you know, one of the things I want to mention in hindsight on this, normally all the manuals always for this heavy equipment, they always say, uh, you know, park the equipment on flat ground before you, um, before you start your work and chalk the tires and all this stuff. Um, you know, if, if you've got reasonable judgment, you can get around a lot of those things. But in this case, the truck is actually sitting on a little bit of a slope. And so you go to jack it up and it's kind of a sketchy situation. I ended up making some extra blocking. I screwed together a couple of, uh, two by sixes to sit underneath that jack stand. But even then I didn't feel comfortable with just one. So I left the, uh, the air jack underneath it in addition to the jack stand, um, you really want to be extra careful with this heavy stuff. Assume that it may fall at any point. Um, you know, when I was underneath there, I tried to put my head in a position where if it did fall all the way down, you know, I wouldn't get squashed. Uh, people do die with this stuff. It's, it's, uh, really kind of tragic. In fact, one of the neighbors had a, um, uh, incident a bunch of years ago where somebody, somebody was, uh, crushed by a piece of machinery. And so, you know, I try to keep that in mind whenever I'm working on it um, and never get too comfortable. But anyway, I'll go ahead and fire it up and we'll see how that tire airs up. All right, well, that's filled up. I got the uh, jacks out from underneath there and that'll be a wrap for this evening. I got three more tires that are going to have to come off and get swapped, but I won't uh, worry about those until, uh, until they force me to. So this should get me back to work. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.